morning. God, our God is a good God. Please let us rise. We are in the presence of the Almighty God. Praise the Lord. I'm not seeing people welcoming anyone this morning. I want to see you leave your seat and welcome your neighbor. Yes, welcome your neighbor. Appreciate them. We thank God for being here this morning. We came here safely without any problems. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Praise the Lord. Oluwa etobi etobi o etobi Oluwa etobi etobi o etobi Kuseni tale fi shaka we reo etobi. Kuseni tale fi shafi we reo etobi. How great is God to you? I want you to think back and ask yourself, how great is God to you? In your way of life, how great is God to you? In your business, how great is God to you? Do you consult him first in every area of your life? You wake up in the morning, is God the first thing that comes to your lips? Check yourself, let's examine ourselves. Is it only a Sunday, Sunday medicine? When we come to church on Sunday, that's it. Or is it part of our life? Oluwa etobe etobe yo Etobi Oluwa Etobi Etobi o Etobi O senita le fecha kawere o Etobi Kuseni tale fecha fiwere o etobi oluwa. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, well, let's just worship Him. Just thank God. Just thank Him. Oh, thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Oh, Rabba Senderi Kasondo Roboshine. Thank God. You are here this morning, Ramasondo Roboshika Basenderia, because he brought you here safely, Rabba Senderia, Rabba Kasiribo Kunta Masondo Robo, Rimo Seke Riga Zeke Riga Sondo Robo Shenderia, Hora Baba Baba, Hori Mo Seke Riga Zekeria, Rimo Senderica Syria. Thank God for your life. Thank God for what He's doing in your life. Rabba Seke Riga Sondo Bo, Rimo Seke Riga Zekeria, Rabba Baba, Rim Brono Seke Riga Syriba Kuntaria, Hora Baba Baba. Thank God, thank God for our leaders. Thank God for Nigeria. Thank God for what God is doing in Nigeria. Rabba Sondorobo Shenderia. Rabba Senderia. Nigeria will not be submerged. In the name of Jesus. Rama Sekeriga Zondorobo. Rimbrono Sekeria. Rabba Bababa. Rimo Sekeria. Nigeria will be known for righteousness. In the name of Jesus, Rabba Sekeri Gazenderiam, Rim Brono Sekeriam, we cast out the spirit of the bond woman out of Nigeria. In the name of Jesus, Rabba Sekeri Gazenderiam, Rama Sekeriam, and we decree in the name of Jesus, Rama Sekeriam, the children of the bond woman will never rule this nation again. 
in the name of Jesus. Rabba ba ba ba, holo bo sendiria, rimo sekeri gazegria, hola ba 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 ba. Arise, shine, Nigeria, for your light has come, for the glory of the Lord is upon you. Rimo sekeri gazegria, hola ba 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 ba, hori bo sini ba kuntaria, rimo sekeri gazegria. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for Nigeria. Thank you, Jesus, for Nigeria. Rabba Sondrobo. Thank you, Lord, for our leaders. They will comply. They will conform. In the name of Jesus. Rabba Sondrobo Shenia. They will align with your word, with your prophecies. In the name of Jesus. Rabba Sekerika Sondrobo. Hora Baba. Hori Mo Senderia. Rabba Baba. Rimo Sekerika Zekeria. Rabba Baba. Holo Bobo. Rimbrono Siri Bakuntaria. Holo bo sekeri ga sekeri ya. Holo bo bo bo. Hori mo siri ba kunta ma sekeri ya. Raba ba ba kasiri ya. Oh thank you Jesus. Oh thank you Jesus. Oh thank you Jesus. Raba sondo lo bo shengeri ya. Oh thank you Father. In Jesus name. I want us to pray for today's service. I want us to pray for the man of God. Our pastor, Pastor Daniel Odukaya. I want us to pray for him this morning. Rama sekeri ga sondolo bo shenderia. The God will uphold him and keep him. Rama sondolo bo shenderia. And will reveal the secrets of his word to him continuously. In the name of Jesus. Rama sekeri Wherever he is. Raga sekeri God will lift him. Rimo sekeri ga sekeri ya. Ho raba baba. Rimo sekeri ga sekeri ya. Rama sekeri ga sondolo bo. Rimo sekeri ba kuntari ya. As your word comes forth this morning. It will change lives. It will turn around situations in the mighty name of Jesus. It will break every stony heart. Rimo Sekeria. It will melt every stony heart and replace it with softness. In the name of Jesus. Rabba Sekeria. Rabba Basondorobo. Hori Mo Sekeria Sekeria. Hora Baba. Rimo Sekeria. Rama Senderia. Today, today, God is going to come down in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Rimbro no Sekeria. Miracles will be wrought in our midst. In the name of Jesus, Rabba Sekeria, Hora Baba Baba, Rimo Sekeria, Hora Baba Baba. We will not go without receiving our blessings today. In the name of Jesus, Rimo Sekeria Sekeria, Hora Baba Baba, Hora Mo Senderia, Hori Mo Sekeria Sekeria, Rabba Baba Baba, Hora Mo Siriba Kunta Ma Sekeria, Rama Sondolo Mo Sekeria, Rimbro No Senderia, Rimo Sekeria Sekeria, Hora Baba Baba. Hori mo sekeria, rama sondolo bo shikaba, rama sekeri gazekeria, raba ba 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 sondolo bo, rimo sekeri gazekeria, rama senderia, raba ba sondolo bo senderia. Pray for yourself. What are you expecting here this morning? Are you going to be a spectator, rama sondolo, or are you here to to be in His presence to receive from Him? In the name of Jesus, rama sondolo bo senderia. Lay down your issues. Ask God what you want this morning. Believe and have the faith, because God is going to do it in the name of Jesus. Rabba Sekeria, Hola Baba, Holo Mo Senderia, Rabba Sekeriga Sekeria, Hola Baba Bakasiria, Hori Mo Senderiga Siri Bakuntaria, Rimo Senderia, Hola Baba, Hori Mo Sekeriga Sekeria. There are no stubborn issues in our lives because God is in control, because God is in charge. Rama Sondorobo. Rimo Sekeria, it is time to pray, it is time to decree, it is time to approach in the name of Jesus. Rimo Sekeria, Sekeria, attach your point of need in the mighty name of Jesus. There is nothing, nothing that is impossible for our God to do. Rama Sekeria, Rabba Baba Kusundurbo, Rimo Sekeria, thank Him, thank Him. You don't have to see it before you believe it when you know and you have the faith that God is able to do all things. Then you know that there is nothing, no matter how long it has looked, no matter how long it has taken, there is nothing God cannot do. Rabba Sondorobo, Rima Sekeriga Sekeria, Hora Baba, Romo Senderica Siriba Kuntaria, Rama Sondorobo, Rimo Sekeria. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we thank you. Rama Sondorobo Senderia, Hora Baba, thank you for your healing. Hora Baba Sekeria. Hold up, Senator. Anything, Lord God Almighty, that is brought before you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Rabba Sekeria. Oh, Rabba Baba. There shall be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Rabba Sekeria. Sondrobo. Green Bruno Sekeria. Rabba Baba Kassiria. Oh, Rabba Kassiria. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ramasono Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Lord, we just want to say thank you. It is a pleasure to be here this morning, Lord. We are expectant. We know what you can do, Lord. And we know that we will not leave this place today without being blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. It's such a beautiful Sunday morning in God's presence. Is somebody ready to praise God this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. We are going to Epic Land this morning. Hope you don't mind. Woo. Jesus is deserving of our praise.
because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him shall we trust. Surely He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from every perilous pestilence. He will cover us with His feathers and under His wings shall we take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling place. For he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, upon the young lion and the serpent shall we trample under our feet. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us up on high because we have known his name. We will call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. With long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Job that God does great things, unsearchable and marvelous things that cannot be counted. One of the most amazing things about God is that he's too big for error. He's too wise for mistakes. Nothing happens by coincidence with God. And so we're here to say thank you for being God. If you're grateful, raise your hand and say thank you for being God. Hallelujah. Amen.
Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Somebody wants to say thank you for being God. Somebody needs to say that this morning. Just tell him thank you. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being the Alpha, the Omega, the all-sufficient God, the Father of life in whom there is no variableness near the shadow of turning. You need to say thank you for being God this morning. Fountain is saying thank you for being God. We bless you, Father God Almighty. We exalt you, Jesus. In Jesus, much less name, we have prayed. Please be seated. It's time for our prayers. Amen. I'd like you to turn your Bibles to Psalm 23. We thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. Mm. Thank you. Somebody is saying, but for God, where will I be today? Hallelujah to Jesus. But for Elohim, but for Jesus, Yehoshua Amashiach, but for him. Are you in Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his sake, name's sake. Verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. And because he's your shepherd, your want is guaranteed. What did I say? Your want. Better still, your needs are guaranteed. <clears throat> Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may, I will have you remember this morning that he is your shepherd is the bishop and the architect of our soul and if he's your shepherd you will not want for any good thing in the name of Jesus 
my interest really is in verse 2. And it says, it makes me to lie down in green pastor. It leads me beside the still waters. In one word, he gives you rest this morning. Somebody needs the rest of God. Somebody needs to be in a peaceful habitation. Somebody needs to recognize that he is Lord, he is the bishop, and he is the architect of our soul. And so, rest is guaranteed in the name of Jesus. For Nigeria, rest is guaranteed. The Bible says, while we look not at these things, anything that is visible is temporary. We look not at the things that we see because they are temporary. And guess what? Anything and everything that you see is subject to change. And Bible counsels us to look at the things that are unseen. Guess what? Those are the things that are permanent. Anything that you can behold is subject change. I think it's a place, good place for us to rise up this morning. And let's ask God for rest over this nation in the name of Jesus. Let's ask Jehovah for rest in the name that is above every other name. Lord, we ask you for rest, almighty God. You are our shepherd. You are the bishop, the architect of our soul. Lord Almighty God, thank you for rest for Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Thank you for rest. Thank you for rest. Thank you because you lead us in green pasture, my God. You make us lie down in green pasture. You lead us beside still waters. Lord, thank you for rest for this nation from all the challenges that we have. Lord, thank you for rest, almighty God. Thank you for rest from terrorism, Lord Almighty. Thank you for rest from banditry, almighty God. Thank you for rest from corruption, almighty God. Thank you for rest from greed, Jehovah God. Thank you for rest from avarice, Jehovah God Almighty. Lord, thank you for rest for Nigeria. In the name of Jesus, my God. We focus not on the things that we see, my God. Because the things that we see are subject to change. They are temporary, Almighty God. The only thing that cannot change are the things that we do not see. Because they are eternal. We bless you over Nigeria, Almighty God. Because our economy will change. Lord Almighty God. It will change Almighty God for the better. It will change for the good Jehovah God Almighty. We bless you Jehovah God Almighty. We lift up holy hands this morning without wrath and without doubt my God. We lift up this nation Father God Almighty and we pray for rest. We pray for rest my God. Rest on all sides my God. Rest on all sides, my God. Rest on all sides, my God. A peaceful habitation, Almighty God Almighty. Mabosh Kadembra Kadodia. Over Nigeria, over this country, Almighty God. Rest, Almighty God. Rest, Almighty God. Rest, Almighty God. Nemosh Kadembra Bokadia. Robo Shokoko de Dadodadu. Rest, Almighty God. Nagikos Kadabadia. Thank you, Father God. I think it's a good time to pray for yourself. Can you ask God for rest? You know where it hurts this morning. Where you need rest. Where you need the peace of God this morning. Can you ask God for rest? In the name of Jesus. Lord, I desire rest, Jehovah God. Rest only come from the presence of the thrice holy God. Lord, I ask for rest, my God. From all my struggles, from all my fears, from all my trepidation, Lord, rest this morning. I ask you for rest, Jehovah God. Somebody needs to ask God for rest in both Kadia. You need to tell the Lord, Lord, rest, my God. I desire rest in my home, Makosa. I desire peace, Makiboso. Somebody desires rest in her marriage. The Lord says to tell you, you have that rest 
in the name of Jesus. Rest on all sides, Father God. Rest over the fountain of life, church, Jehovah God. Rest over this church, Lord Almighty. Rest, Jehovah God Almighty. Rest, 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 my God. We ask for the rest of God, my God. We bless you, Father. We thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Thank you very much. You may be seated. This morning on Fountain News. Bishops Court at Home Affairs meet this Saturday. Ruth and Boaz Fellowship also meet this Saturday. And Heritage of Grace auditions for a new play. It's a pleasure to have you in church today. Good morning and welcome to this episode of Fountain News. I am Joshua Murakio and it gives me great pleasure to welcome to Fountain News, Precious Amayo. Thank you, Joshua. Now, are you a married man? Join other married men at the monthly fellowship of Bishop's Court coming up this Saturday from 9 a.m. Themis, and you call yourself a man. And venue is the youth church. Gate pass, invite another man. If you are a married man, you don't want to miss this. The event will also be streamed live on their Instagram handle at Bishop's Court NG. Now, here is something for married women. Home Affairs Fellowship invites you to their September hangout coming up this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Theme is Touching His Garment, and uh, venue is the chapel. And now, don't come along. Please invite and come along with your married female friends. Prayer requests and testimonies should be sent to homeaffairs at tflc.org. Ruth and Boaz Fellowship invites all mature singles, single parents, divorcees, widows and widowers to their monthly meeting coming up this Saturday at 10 a.m. Same is Supernatural Progress and venue is the Multipurpose Hall. Please invite and come along with a friend as you both enter the season of Supernatural Progress. You may participate in this meeting online on Ruth and Boaz's Facebook page. Are you creative? Do you have a flair for script writing, drama, dance, or the spoken word? I think I, I think I can dance. That is my gift. If your answer is yes to any okay. of these questions, then the Heritage of Grace, that is the drama department of this church, invites you to an audition holding on Saturday, September the 24th at 11 a.m. Venue is the youth church. To participate in this audition, you must have completed believers class. Now, this is a spoiler alert. Don't say we told you. In fact, I'm not telling you this. A little bird told us that the Heritage of Grace is putting together a special blockbuster stage play in memory of our dear pastor, Nomchi Udukoya. More details coming later. Now, are you a lawyer by profession and also a member of this church? The outreach department invites you to participate as a volunteer lawyer during its legal clinics coming up in November this year across the five correctional centers in Lagos. That is the Koyi Badagri Maximum, Medium and Female Correctional Centers. Please reach out to Dr. Achieno Henry on 0802-361-1377 to indicate your interest. The Outreach Department would also like to welcome members of the church who have completed Believers class to join the department as they continue to reach out to souls in all their outreach centers. Once again, please reach out to Dr. Ationo Henry on 0802-361-1377 or fill out your details on the church's website at www.tflc.org forward slash join a department. This is from the Digital Media Store. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You can get messages by our senior pastor and other ministers, including today's message in CD, MP3, and digital formats, which can be instantly downloaded to your devices. Please visit the digital media store after this service. Now, join the Fountain Sports Club aerobic session this Saturday at 6.30 a.m. Venue is the Fountain Gardens. Please come along with your family and friends. Just a quick reminder, Children's Church holds both on-site and online today. Please note that the online classes start at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Children joining the online classes should do so using the TF4LC link tree address. And Home Fellowship holds this evening at 6 o'clock. Singles Fellowship holds tomorrow at 6 p.m. 
and Bible study continues online this Tuesday at 6 p.m. and prayer meeting follows at 6.45 p.m. Shower service holds on site and online this Thursday at 9 a.m. And this is quite important. Don't forget to drop by the multipurpose hall that is on your way out of the auditorium for mm -hmm. your blood pressure check after the service. Now to my favorite part of the news. If your birthday or wedding anniversary was last week or is it today, please rise up as we rejoice with you. Let's welcome the celebrants, the birthday celebrants, the wedding anniversary celebrants. Let's welcome them. Oh, wonderful. Happy birthday to you all. Happy, 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 happy birthday to you all. We thank God for God adding another year to your year in the mighty name of Jesus. You will grow in stature in the name of Jesus. You will grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the name of Jesus. And those celebrating their wedding anniversary, congratulations. Many sweet, beautiful years in advance in Jesus' name. As God is already in you and in that marriage, that marriage will continue to grow in the name of Jesus. And fruitfulness and blessings shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Congratulations. Please just give them another round of applause. Praise the Lord. And so if you're worshiping with us for the first time today, please would like to see you and welcome you to the Fountain of Life Church. to the Fountain of Life Church. I can see two, three, four people here this morning. You're welcome. We appreciate you. Uh, even though this is your first time of coming, we know definitely that you're going to come again. The food that we're eating here, you must be part of it because our pastor, the senior pastor of this church, feeds us with the word. So we welcome you to be part of us and to be permanent here with us in Jesus' name. Please welcome them. Praise the Lord. And we have a promise for this, for this week. And it is Ruth chapter 2 verse 12. Ruth 2 12. And it says, The Lord repay your work. And a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel. Under whose wings you have come for refuge. And the easy version says, you have done many good things. So I pray that the Lord will do good things for you in return. You have come here to be safe with the Lord, who is Israel's God. I pray that he will bless you. This week is a week of blessing. He said he will repay you. He will repay your work and a full reward, a full reward after your work. And what is that work? What is that work? Can God identify you and me? Do we have relationship with him? Do we give God time? Or we just give him any time, we just feel like that is what is remaining. Do we have a relationship? So what work? Are we doing for God for us to get full reward? Yesterday was evangelism. How many of us were here to just give God our time? God loves us so much. He wants to have a relationship with us. 
And he says, when we give him, when we have done that which we are supposed to do, he said he will reward. He doesn't need our money. He said, if I'm hungry, I wouldn't ask you. But God wants a relationship with us. Please let us rise. Let us rise and ask God to give us that grace. The grace to be in good relationship with him. Not just to give him the remnant of our time. But to dedicate ourselves to him in full. So that our reward will be full in the name of Jesus. Search us, O oh Lord, help us, Almighty God. Father, Lord God, we love you and we know you love us, Almighty Father. We want to please you every day of our life, Almighty God. Father, Lord, credit us, Lord, with the work that we have done. And let the full reward be ours in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty Father, for in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah, I'm not gonna finish. Yeah. You're not gonna finish. Hallelujah, I'm not gonna finish on my mouth. Hallelujah, I'm not gonna finish on my mouth. Oh. Hallelujah, I'm not gonna finish on my mouth. Hey. Hallelujah, I'm not gonna finish on my mouth. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm not gonna finish on my mouth. top down very quickly. Na, 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 na. You're laughing. It's not funny. Because in reality, honestly, if you just take a minute and think, on my way to church this morning, right on the Bagada Road, there's like, I don't know how many cars accident. Yes, that already happened this morning. I think maybe about six or seven cars. Yes. That all crashed into themselves. Just there. It doesn't look like anybody. Uh, it was a fatal thing. Thank God for that. But it just tells you, it takes a second. You know, we go back and we go forth. We fly. I can't even count how many planes I've been on between July when I left and now. But I thought about it this morning and I said to myself, you know what, girl? Only God. So when we're used to it, what? The reality is we need to condition ourselves not to get used to things, especially the things of God. So, Ale. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!
Let's have you worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we worship you. Great is your faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. God is faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. We worship you, Jesus. Just say beautiful things to God. We worship you, Jesus. Forevermore, what you say is what you do. Yes. You never fail, you never change. You are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you.
what that means and you leave it can we have all the people outside coming and as they do I want us to appreciate the opportunity to be in church this morning to thank the Lord for the privilege that we have to gather in his presence to be called the children of God to have a place a hiding place to have a place of fellowship and of worship in liberty Yesterday night, I had to have dinner with one of my um, visiting expatriate friends in America. And he was telling me about a time he was in China with his wife. And they had gone to a church that they didn't, couldn't quite comprehend what they were saying. But it wasn't, it was what was called the international church. The international churches are just for foreigners. And you have to show your passport that you're a foreigner because the local people are not allowed to go. But that when they got there, they just didn't understand anything the way it was. So somebody else then gave them an address and said, go to this place. We think you'll fit in better. It turned out it was like a secret church because you couldn't gather in a sense. And when they got there, said they met about, I don't know, maybe he said 12 people who were locals who were gathering in fellowship secretly. And that as they walked in, that the guys started worshiping and they were confused. And they said to them that their leaders, the people who led that fellowship, had left a few weeks before that they were Australians. And they had been praying for God to send them another leader. And they were like, well, we're coming here for the first time. But that's not relevant. It's because all of the people in that fellowship were new converts. So they couldn't lead themselves. They were just hearing all your Bible stories that you've known since you were a kid. They were just discovering them for the first time. So my friend said he and his wife did that for some time while they were in the country until they left. And then he realized the kind of risk that these people take every day they gather to have service. And that their service locations were as diverse as you can imagine. Because they had to keep changing and keep moving. Because it was not officially allowed for them as indigents to gather. Here you are. You woke up in your house this morning. You made a choice to go to church. You had the right to go to church. There are many things wrong with Nigeria, but nobody has stopped you from going to service. So when we think about the things we don't like about Nigeria, better know the things we need to be grateful for. Because we can be, we can get used to what we have and only think about what we do not have. Father, we worship you. We thank you for the privilege to come to church. We do not take it for granted. We will never take it for granted. Let's put our hands together as we say hello to our pastor and say we love you, we miss you, we know that you're well and all is well with you and that Jehovah is your God and is with you. And this morning, we just want to blow you a kiss. We love you, our pastor. Please have a seat. As we have the liberty to listen to the word of God without hiding. How many places can you hide all of us that are gathered here? So don't take it for granted. So this morning, I am not your preacher. The Lord has himself chosen of his own children, the one assigned to speak to you this morning. You know, no man has any words to give. Only Jehovah speaks. But upon the one that he has assigned for the day or chosen for the assignment, 
he manifests and he speaks through. So we know without a doubt that you will be blessed today because you've come to the house of the Lord to listen to the word of God as he will speak through his own servant that he has chosen this morning. So I'd like you, church, to welcome a brother, my friend, the husband of a beautiful woman, a faithful man and a faithful servant of God, a diligent, focused man of God who serves God without adding nothing to it. Please, shall we welcome Pastor Femi Nebokbe as it comes to share the word. Praise the name of Jesus. Come and just give the Lord some praise this morning. He alone deserves our praise. He alone deserves all adoration for there is none like him. The ancient of days, we worship you. The lily of the valley, we adore you. Our bridge of our troubled waters, we exalt you. The shepherd of our souls, we adore you. Our Father and our God, we love you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all you've done. We thank you for loving us regardless of our weaknesses. We thank you for accepting us regardless of our frailties. We thank you, Lord, for remaining merciful unto people like me. Thank you for staying faithful unto people like me. Not that I deserve it, but purely by your grace and your mercies. Father, we say thank you. And we are confident that you do that which you propose in our lives this morning. Overrule the agenda of man and touch us in the way that only you can. And we are confident that we shall live here this morning bigger, better, and stronger. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. My Jesus, my Savior, Oh uh -huh. 
you are not a man to lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. If you've said it, you'll do it. If you've spoken it, it will surely come to pass. Father, we trust you. We trust you. We're not unmindful of the things around us. But Father, we trust you. Because you're too faithful. We trust you. Father, we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. As a nation, we trust you. As a church, we trust you. As families, we trust you. As individuals, we choose to trust you. We trust you, Father. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. It will end in praise. It will surely end in praise. And Father, your name alone shall be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. May you please have your seats. Thank you. I want to thank Pastor Tyro for this privilege I have to stand before you this morning. I I don't take it for granted and I don't make light of this. Standing here before you is not a right, it's a privilege. And um, I pray that God will help me this morning to communicate his heart to us this morning. And thank you, Pastor, for trusting me enough to yield this pulpit to me this morning. I'm grateful for you accepting me. I'm grateful for you choosing to hold my hand when it was virtually impossible. Pastor, I say thank you. Many may not understand what, I, what, what that meant, but those that know, know. Praise the name of Jesus. Um, I'm grateful, Pastor. And I pray that your head will not lack oil. And your garment will not be stained in the name of Jesus. The God whom you trust will continue to uphold you. You won't have a better yesterday. From glory unto glory. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that in your very eyes you shall see your prayers regarding us answered continually. In the name of Jesus. And our prayers regarding you too shall be answered in the name of Jesus. Amen. While Pastor Blessing was exhorting us before she brought me up, she mentioned what she saw this morning, the accident on the Bagada Expressway. And you know, there's some things we take for granted in life. And um, if we don't have a proper understanding of some things, we may never make progress or get the fullness of all that God has for us. I was careful to listen to her. She mentioned the word understand about three times. She mentioned the word comprehend once. The same things. You can't understand without comprehending. Praise the name of Jesus. And my topic this morning is, is get understanding. Get understanding. 
I mean, over the last few weeks, I've been looking over my life. It was my birthday on the 14th of August. And around that time, I think a week before and some weeks after, I just reflect over my life. I thank God for where I am. And I thank God for what he has brought me through. And an incident came back to my mind. <laughs> Please don't laugh at me. You promise not to laugh. Touch your chest and say I won't laugh. Praise the name of Jesus. You promise, and you're laughing already. I've not even said anything, you're laughing. Okay. I'm an engineer by qualification. And the journey to become an engineer wasn't too play, wasn't too easy. I remember when I did my O levels, physics particularly. I attended lectures faithfully, but when it came to the O levels, I failed gloriously. <laughs> My parents weren't too happy, and they said, what happened? I said, it's a lecturer that didn't teach us well. Ah, okay. But in the same class, some passed some field. So it's not the lecturer. And God so had it that at the end of that school year, the, the physics teacher had to leave. So another teacher was brought in. So I retook my physics and O-levels and other subjects. I won't tell you how many. And um, on the retake, I passed. So I said, Daddy, you see, it's not the, it's not the, it's the teacher. And um, I moved on to A-levels. The same teacher we had for physics A-levels had a different teacher for maths A-levels. And um, once again, I failed gloriously, both maths and physics. So it wasn't the teacher now, it was me. And I sat back and I said, what went wrong then? That I failed, passed, failed, passed. Even to graduate as an engineer, I failed some courses which I had to retake. And was it that I wasn't being taught? I was being taught, but I didn't understand Koyemi. So I couldn't make sense of what I was being taught. Praise the name of Jesus. I had so much information. So much was put into me. Well, so much was said. But I just didn't understand. Because I didn't understand, I couldn't pass the exams. Praise the name of Jesus. So just a few weeks ago, I was looking at the scriptures, and I came across Proverbs chapter 4. It's a scripture we all know too well. Can we open to it, please? Proverbs chapter 4. I read from the New King James Version. I read from verse 1. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you doctrine, I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law when I was when I was when I was my son's my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother. He also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and leave. Verse 5 says, Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, for she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. 
Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, but in all your getting, get what? Understanding. Without understanding, there can be no wisdom. Without understanding, there can be no wisdom. Without understanding, you cannot make progress, a month of supernatural progress. In all you're getting, get understanding. Praise the name of Jesus. I remember in the physics class, we were taught a lot of principles, law thermodynamics, laws of motion, laws of electrostatics, laws of gravity, and so many other things. These are things that, not that I didn't know, but I didn't understand. I didn't know how to apply them to what I was faced with. There can't be understanding without knowledge. And what is knowledge? Knowledge is facts and information and skills acquired through experience or education. Facts, information, and skills acquired through experience or education. Things speak to us every day. As I'm talking to you, you're listening to me, I'm giving you information. You read, you get information, you get facts. Either rightly or wrongly, but facts and information come into you. Praise the name of Jesus. These are the things that we are taught. These are things we teach our children. You look around you, you see things. We're here this morning, you look around us. The lights are on, information. We see some panels on the walls, wonderful colors. But do we know what they do? Do we know why they're there? Praise the name of Jesus. We look at the screen, we're seeing pictures. That is information. This is a fact. But do you know how and why? Praise the name of Jesus. So everybody gets facts, everybody gets information. What you learn skill-wise is knowledge, information. Understanding is the ability to understand something. Understanding to understand. Comprehension, the ability to understand something and to comprehend something. And what is comprehension? The ability to make connections between what is being read and what you already know. Praise the name of Jesus. To understand something is your being able to relate that piece of information or that fact to what you already know. That is where you can say, okay, okay, oh yeah, means sing. I know something already. But when something new is added and I can relate with it based on what I know, then I can say, I now understand what is being taught. Am I making sense this morning? And if I can now understand the facts being presented before me, I can now act wisely based on my understanding. Without understanding, you cannot act rightly because you've not processed the information they wish to be processed. A lot of things we know, 
but we cannot process or we've not processed it properly to get to the place of making a right and proper decision, acting wisely. So without understanding, there can be no wisdom. That is why the Bible says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Yes, we want to act right and behave right and do the right thing at the right time. But without understanding, you cannot act right. And what is wisdom? Being able to make the right judgment based on what you've understood. Am I making sense this morning? So, understanding is the bridge between knowledge and wisdom. A man of wisdom is a man of understanding. And I failed those exams because I did not understand what I was taught in class. And when I was told to write answers, I wrote the answers based on what I knew, but I didn't understand. I couldn't prove to the examiner that I understood what I was taught, so he failed me. Every day we are facing the examinations, we're making decisions, we're making choices based on information around us, and we must act right based on our understanding. We are expected to act right based on our understanding. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about a group of people in uh, Mark chapter 4 verse 12 that they are always learning but never come to the place of understanding. Then of what use is the learning if they cannot understand and apply right? Praise the name of Jesus. The TPT puts the Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, getting revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is what you need, so invest in it. It is our duty to get understanding. No man, all man can do is teach you. We have the scriptures we read. It's now left to you and I, or for you and I, to make the effort and to pay the price to understand. The TPT says, revelation knowledge is what you need. So invest in it. Shows you the importance of understanding. Many of us have made foolish decisions, me inclusive, because I lacked understanding regarding some issues. And I looked at things face value and I acted based on that. Oh my God. <laughs> God is merciful. And since then, I've said to myself, Femi, no matter what men say, if men may say that you're slow, men may say that you are this or that, but make sure that you get an understanding regarding the things before you. So I can act right and feel safe. Understanding puts you in a place of strength. Others may be ruffled, you know what you know and you understand what you know. And because you understand, you know that you can always act right based on God's directives and God's leading. Everybody can learn, but not everybody understands. The Bible says that men will kiss the lips of him that gives the right answer. A man that understands will always give the right answer. And if you give the right answer, men will come and kiss your lips. Not Kiss, kiss, or they'll come and you know, they'll suck up to you and they will bless you and they will appreciate you and they'll look for, they always look forward to being in your presence because you always give the right answer. 
Praise the name of Jesus. In First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, to verse 23, the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. Can we turn to it, please? This is one of my favorite scriptures. Of 32. 1 Chronicles 12, 32. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. The sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times. And because of that, they knew what ought to be done. And because of that, the people were subject to them. They had charge. We are saying Nigeria is tough. Nigeria is this. Things are like that. Exchange rate is, psh, thank God for it. But in the midst of that, some people are still making some right moves. They understand the times and they know what they ought to do and they're making progress. So if men like that are mentioned in the scriptures, then what about you and I? Do we understand the times we're in? Or we just know that things are like this and not understanding why or how things are and then knowing what to do? I mean, thank God for people like Pastor Blessing and many others in church and inspiration to a lot of us. In the midst of the chaos, they are still making sense of it. Praise the name of Jesus. They are still making sense of it. They're not losing their minds. They're not closing shop. They're still standing and making progress. Why? They understand the times and they know what ought to be done. And because of that, people are can I put it now? People are always eager to hear them speak because they know some things that many of us don't know because they've chosen to process the things in a way that they can make meaning of it and know what to do. I mean, I, I'm not discounting the power of place of prayers please see my heart but I think a lot of us Christians we put our thinking and reasoning to one side we fail to engage it and if you don't engage it you cannot understand we compete in the same environment with the unbelievers and they are taking time to master the process. They are taking the pains to understand the process. Some are looking for how to <laughs> looking for how to cut corners or how to play the system. But the thing is, they are diligent in studying the system to master it before you say, hey, they've gone to Z to wait for you. And we are playing in the same field and we're not taking time to, 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 to master, to think and to study. And we're praying and they are moving. Understanding, please hear me, hear me this morning. I'm not discounting or playing down the place of prayers. But understanding requires work requires diligence go to any business analyst what do they do they look at the figures they look back historical and they project based on the figures they've seen 
they can now bring out something that we all understand. That is not prayer. That is work. That is diligence. That is skill. And we pay them millions and billions for that work. For what they've understood. Why can't you and I get to that place of understanding and get them to come to us? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. The Bible says, will crown your efforts with success. So there's a place for your own understanding. That is your own, your own responsibility to walk, to understand. That when you trust God, God will now come and add his own wisdom and direct it regarding what you've already understood. And that will start to stand you out. So the place of prayers and the place of diligent work now come together and you have good success. We've prayed. We'll continue to pray. But let us get understanding. Bible says that the children of this world are wiser in their own generation and the children of light. Please hear my heart this morning. We are praying. They are walking. When a new law comes out, for those that are in business, when a new decree or a new whatever comes out, they sit down and study it. How can this affect my business? What is this saying about my business? And they are making moves and realigning themselves to get the best out of that situation. And then when you pray, God will now make the way out clearer to you and give you the grace and the strength to go through it. Let us get understanding. A lot of us, our children are giving us issues. I remember when I was in school, oh God, thank God for parents. And little parents, due to lack of understanding, have damaged their children. I learned wow, about dyslexia in 1979. I was sent to a school and I had to go through some tests, reading, spelling, and everything. I didn't understand what they were after. So at the end of the day, I was cleared. And now got to understand that there's some children in the same class I was in that were dyslexic. They found it difficult to recognize words. Not that they're, they know that they're dumb. The thing just scatters in front of them and they can't make sense of it. So the test I went through was whether or not I was dyslexic. I wasn't dumb and I'm, I'm not dumb. But it's a condition that they, they have that if the parents don't understand, what would they say? Omo yolo doni, go kawe. And they'll beat the child to death's door. It's not the child's fault because we don't understand what the child is going through. And if we understand, so based on that knowledge, they now put those children in extra classes to attend to their needs. And when we had the exams, maybe the exam was two hours for normal, or normal now. For some of us, but those that were dyslexic, based on the level of their dyslexia, they had more time. Some were given 15 minutes extra, some half an hour extra. Why? To make room to accommodate them based on what they're going through. That is understanding and the school knew what they ought to do. And many of those well, my friends then, my friends now, they're flying in the various areas. Some is figures. You look at figures and you start crying. Not that you don't understand. You just, it's, 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 it's a condition. A friend of mine in our engineering class was like that. When he sees figures, he just starts crying. 
and he wants to be an engineer and you see figures and you're crying but the lecturers understood what he was going through and they helped him today is an eng and a Greek engineer highly sought after by some companies in the UK if he was mm, benched that the Leukum or Lodoni to kill his destiny but understanding is key what are your children going through? Do you understand? And can you help them through it? In all you're getting, get understanding. As a business person, do you make, can you make sense of your figures? When we hear analysis on the TV, all these different economic indices and all that, do you understand what they're even saying? I'm selling and I'm making profit. Are you really making profit? The industry that you're involved in, do you understand how it operates? Your own business, do you understand the state of your business and how it is? You look at your figures, can you make sense of it? Do you understand what it is telling you? Money may be coming in, it may be running at a loss. When the cost of production is higher than the cost of, and you don't factor in some things, a lot of us don't factor in <laughs> the cost of power. Just look at our boards, um, raw materials at this price. Okay, market is saying this, I will sell at this, but if the bridge, what goes on in between? Have you factored it in? I came across some books, I think about 10, 12 years ago, by Jim Collins. That those books changed my perspective to a lot of things. I'm not a businessman, I don't want to go into business, I'm a pastor called by God. And I... I'm staying in my calling. Those books, he's not paying me for advertising his books now. But these books blessed me and I'll encourage every business person to get them if they can. One of them is How the Mighty Fall. Great by choice. From good to great and built to last. The one How the Mighty Fall my God, the day I read it, 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 it opened my eyes to a lot of things. We're going to pray in a minute. I've not even gone through half of what I wrote down. It says every business goes through different stages. And this guy and his team have researched a lot of companies, I think, over a span of 20 years, if not more. And they've come to understand some things about businesses and, and how they run businesses. It says that before a business crashes, there are five stages it goes through. And if you don't understand your business, you will miss each of these stages. And if you don't understand, you will know what you ought to do at every point in time. And crash is imminent. Bit of People start running around when crash is on the door, is at the door. But there are signs before that. Do you understand the strength of your business? Do you, do you, is, that, is there something that you can do better than any other person? Do you know it? Are you expanding when it's time for you to consolidate? Understanding your business. Every good idea may not be an idea for now. Understanding your business. As husband and wife, they say, husband, love your wife. Information. Wife, submit to your husband. Information. But do you understand what that means? If you understand what it means, you won't struggle. Even in spiritual things. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15 that we started to show ourselves approved unto God 
a workman that shouldn't be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. One version says, properly explaining the word of truth because you've understood it properly. That requires work. That requires work. Praise the name of Jesus. If you look at Joseph, Joseph had a dream of the seven lean years and the seven fat years. The dream gave him information. But he understood what the dream meant and he knew what he ought to do. Understanding is very, very important. James 1.5 says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask from God who gives to all men liberally without upholding, without holding back. As a Christian, we have the Holy Spirit to help us understand things. He's there to help us to understand. And when he helps us to understand, he helps us to act rightly. That is why, going back to Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who will give to all men nyafu nyafu that hold him back. So we have no excuse to fail. We have no excuse to lag behind. Why? Because we have God with us, who will help us to understand and make sense of all things around about us, and also direct our paths the way he wants us to go and to get us to that expected end, that end of great success. Praise the name of Jesus. We all, we've all been taught about bringing our tithe and offering. But many of us don't really understand the concept, so to speak. They say all they want is to collect our money. All they want is just to collect our money and chop our money. But I pray that we'll all come to a proper understanding of these things, of these spiritual truths, and stop questioning based on our human reasoning. A proper understanding will put you in a place of strength and power, a place of peace, where what you know cannot be taken out of you. A man of understanding is a man of conviction, not easily swayed. I think Paul says that he's fully persuaded. That means that he has thought about this and that. This is the way it should be. And I've now come to that place of conviction based on my understanding. You'll be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It's happening there. We are rushed there. There's a man there. When he speaks, he speaks fire. Psh, we are rushed there. A man there doing miracles. He will slap you and bring out a lizard from your ear. Signs and wonder. We are rushed there. But if we understand that the devil can also manipulate and is a master at counterfeiting, we won't be swayed by every wind of doctrine. Wisdom is the principal thing. My brothers and sisters, but in all we do, let us get understanding. We've heard repeatedly that Jesus died to save mankind from sin, to redeem us from sin. I heard this when I was in second primary school. But the day came the 13th of January, 1991. That saying, John 3.16, made meaning to me. I understood it. So Jesus died to save Femi from his, from his troubles. 
I was expressly maneuvering my way to hell. But Jesus said, no, enough is enough. Today you will understand why I died for you. And my life changed since then. You're here this morning. You've been hearing that Jesus loves you. But it doesn't, it doesn't make any meaning to you. I'd like you to ask the Lord this morning to give an understanding of that. Can we all please rise to our feet? You're in church. You've heard all this. You've been hearing all this for years, but it doesn't make meaning to you. But this morning, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand what the truth is. My wife said she was talking to somebody a few weeks ago. She was somewhere, and this person was a part of the church. She's been in that church for six years. And he was in that same church for seven years before he left Nigeria. So for 13 years, he'd been going to that church. He was acting and behaving, but he was never born again. So I said, didn't he understand the truth or he was just playing? So you're here this morning. It is for you to understand, to make sense of the death, the burial, and his resurrection and how it, and what, how, it, how it impacts your life. Jesus died to save you and to reconcile you back to the Father. So you're here this morning, you don't know who Jesus is, you've not made him your Lord and your Savior. It is your desire to do that. Please raise your hand, we'll pray with you and for you. Father, we thank you for all those who have raised their hand this morning. Jesus, based on the sincerity of their heart, take your place in their heart. Be their Lord, be their Savior in the name of Jesus. Help them to live this new life in you. Help them to properly understand the essence of salvation. In the name of Jesus, and for us, to, for us that know you already, help us to keep understanding and to keep standing in the truth in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that what I've spoken this morning will not count against us in any way in Jesus' name. Help us to properly understand and act rightly at all times that your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Femi as we thank the Lord for the word that we have received this morning. There's abundance of information in the world every day, every minute. I mean, the internet tells you just how much of it. Until we had the internet, I don't think we could realize the quantum of information that is available to us. But every information that is available is not useful for us. Nor is it relevant to us individually. Different portions of them are relevant to us. But it takes understanding and the spirit of God, the discernment through all of that information to take the portion that is relevant to us and through understanding to act rightly in the context of the moment that we may fulfill the purpose of God for our lives. Otherwise, we will be overwhelmed. We will misbehave. We will react. We will respond to the actions of men without the guidance of God. We will fight battles when indeed, in some moments, it is expedient to lose the battle and wait to win the war. Because there's a difference between battles and wars. But it takes the wisdom and the grace of God to know the moments and the actions that are required. And sometimes when you do some things, men without understanding will judge the situation. And because you yourself do not fully comprehend the matters, you will act to please 
that which they have said and you will miss the point. It is why the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Because when you are led by the Spirit of God and you follow the sequence, a man that does not work should not eat, which means you might pray from morning till night, but you must work. Which means as we will gather the information, we will do the work and allow the power of the Lord to come into it and bless it for the fruit, both in physical and spiritual matters. So what Pastor Femi has taught us today is foundational, is fundamental, it is critical. And it is what separates the Christians from others. It is your secret weapon if you understand it. It is how you move, why you move, why you don't. And nobody can fully comprehend that. Uh -uh. How can you do this? You just laugh. You might be in pain, but you wait. Why? Because God has a moment where it is expedient to act and to follow his instructions. Understanding of the times and the seasons guides the actions. Thank you so much, Pastor Femi, this morning. I want us to go back, listen to it, investigate it, research it ourselves, and ask the Lord always to give us wisdom and understanding. And in having wisdom and understanding, we become men and women that do not question whether we should give our offering or give our tithe. No matter whose opinion is available, it is why you need to read the scriptures for yourself. Why you must understand what the Lord is saying and get to a place of personal conviction so that you are not blown to the left or to the right by the opinions of men. Today I think this, tomorrow I'll change my mind. Who cares? What is important is, what has God said? What are the antecedents that you see? What does the record prove to you? Where are the testimonials you have heard that are tied to tithes and offering? What are those that are personal to you and the ones of others? And then you make a personal decision for which you are accountable. If you don't get to a place of such understanding in life, all you will be will be a reactive person, which means the remote control for your life is in the hands of others. This morning, I ask us to rise as we willingly, willfully bring to the Lord our offering and our tithe in worship. See, if you do not give it with joy and conviction, you are not worshiping God. You can be like the guy who has been in church for 13 years without understanding. Because you are giving so your neighbor can see that you too, you dropped something. That's a useless gift. It's true. Because God, it's not your money that God is concerned with. It's the obedience behind that which you have done. So, let's lift our offerings to the Lord in worship. As we thank him for the grace and the privilege to be able to come to the house of the Lord to gather without restraint. And to have the capacity to give back to him of that which he has given to us in the first instance. Knowing without a doubt that even that which we give to him today is the seed for our next season of harvest. It's a cycle that never ends. Because seed time and harvest time, the Bible says, shall never cease. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We worship you. First, for the seed of opportunity to be present in your house. We thank you. Then, for the opportunity to bring to you an offering or a tithe of that which you have given to us through our labor. We bless your name. We are grateful. And we even thank you ahead for the harvest of our seeds of today. Because that is your word. And we know that you are faithful to your word. We thank you for those amongst us that they desire, they wish it, but today it is not possible. We thank you, Lord, for their life and the gift 
of their presence. And we say, Lord, as they desire it, you will meet their desires and you will provide for them. That when we gather next, Lord, they will joyfully be able to bless you with part of the fruits of their lives. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Temptation is when once you gather like this, the music begins to get to you. The temptation to keep worshiping and praising God, you don't want to go home. Especially when you've been a sojourner for as many weeks as I have been. You have missed the bits. You, you know, it's not the same. You watch it virtually. So I don't understand all you people that are still sitting at home. You know, this is where it happens. When we gather, we can see ourselves, touch ourselves, encourage ourselves, hug ourselves. You know, make the contact. Don't allow the enemy to isolate you and make you feel, oh, it's okay. Shebi, I'm still in church. I know what it means because, you know, I'm a wanderer. So I'm always, there are all the seasons of just virtual, whether God knows from where and anywhere time zones. But I know. There's a difference between when you do that and when you're in the house and you can feel the spirit, the weight of it. So please, if you are still staying home, COVID has gone. You know, get out, get off your box and come to church. 
and let's worship the Lord together. The devil is tricky. It starts with isolation. Trust me. Starts with isolation. Do not allow yourself to be isolated. I want you to look to your left and to your right and smile at someone. Let them get a good reward for physically moving up to come to church today. Touch somebody. There's, uh, there's COVID correction. Okay, hug somebody. Encourage somebody. Give someone a smile. You know, lift up their spirit. And let's know, this is one family. There's nothing like when a family gathers. The Fountain of Life Church is a family. And we have gathered in church today and we're going home joyful knowing that the Lord will be with us through the week. He will do amazing things in our lives. He will open every door that either to was shut against us. Every ground that we were told we could not take, he will grant us the grace to possess them. Men and women will look at us and they will favor us specially. We will make supernatural progress in areas we never thought existed. Nations that, do, you, uh, that you do not know will not conclude what they need to do until they find you. You will return back to this house and you will testify that Jehovah is Lord and he has done for you what nobody else can do. That will be your testimony. In Jesus' name. Let's share the grace. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death, and so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Be a blessing and be blessed. Amen.